next game takes us from concrete operational to formal operational. We're still playing with pixels, but now we're able to think outside of the box. Yep. Yep. And that's Minecraft. Yeah. I agonized on how to categorize Minecraft. I really did. Because Ryan, as, as you point out, there are yeah. just so many different ways to enact this game. Mm -hmm. um, yep. but, but I had to make some decisions. So let me, uh, I'll tell you what I decided and you can tell me what you think of it. I decided this was orange content. I mean, it's you're still playing with objects, you're crafting, you're you know you're you're living in, in uh, you're you're assembling and yeah. constructing things. Yeah. Out of real realities. Yeah. Uh, it's got an orange theme, which mm -hmm. is craft, build, create. Mm -hmm. You know, these mm -hmm. are all very orange impulses, uh, mm -hmm. and it's got an orange to green gameplay. Um, the orange gameplay is again simply uh, think outside the box, take all these pixels and make something new out of them. Uh, this is a sign of formal operational thinking. Mm -hmm. You can do whatever you want now. Here's the building blocks. Make whatever you want and make it glorious. And people do. Yeah. This can also be uh, can also have green gameplay because people collaborate and make these incredible yeah. creations together. And I consider most co-creative games to be green. Some can be orange, but they're mostly sort of they have that green kind of uh, intentionality mm -hmm. behind them. And, and mm -hmm. Minecraft has, you know, its versions of that. Yeah, yeah, totally. I think it's a, a pretty right on. Yeah, so there's so much that's um, cause and effect in this game, you know, uh, the constructions. And then also there's a lot of mechanics where something will trigger another thing in the game. You know, there's results and a uh, chain of cause and effect. And to, in talking about like formal operational, there's a part, I, I forgot to bring this up, but um, there are these devices that if you go look up how they work in the game, you get this page on a wiki that is just full of math that goes, that is just like, I'm like, I can't, I don't, I'm not gonna get this right now. Or like, maybe I could, but I'm gonna have to go back to algebra and things like that because of all the permutations, like literally math equations on like how these things will trigger um, like electric circuits and things like that. So you have that level. It's, so it's like, it can jam on that one. Or you can play the game in just an artistic way and say you, you, you use everything in there in order to make beautiful um, presentations, you know, like you might use a fence, but not for a fence, but for art aesthetic purposes to create something. Um, there's also like how you play the game, like right collaborative. You can do that where you just create worlds together. You do it in peaceful mode and not even about survival. It's just like, what can we create together? This will be fun to do. Um, or you can battle people like, like some people do that. Mm -hmm. um, and then like how you play the game, you can do it. Like, for example, on a farm, you just build a little farm like you would expect normally. Or there's ways in which you can exploit the game. So it shows like the, the, the downfalls of, of an orange, you know, materialistic capitalistic world where like I saw somebody put like a, a llama in a glass box that has a mechanism where it automatically shaves the llama to get the wool off and it drops into a box. And this is just llama is just living in this class box. Now in the game, it never dies. So you're not really killing anything, but it just shows you, it's just like, how can we get the most without doing, without doing anything? So how you play the game matters a lot, you know, right. in this. Right. But it's really interesting that like little kids can play this and enjoy it. Yep. I mean, it spans the spectrum. It's really fascinating that it's that open to people. Um, kind of almost regardless of where your your uh, level is at. Now I can tell like, you know, there's limitations for like a five-year-old, six-year-old, but they can still get into it a bit like with some help. <laughs> they know how to tear down a tree. They don't know how to tear build down a tree. like circuits, but they can, you know, tear down a tree and make a wall. Yeah, a circuit it. thing. I just have to follow instructions. This is too hard. Yeah, no, exactly. So, you know, this is, this is a great, this was a great example of orange. Yeah. I'm going to shut my window real quick. Yeah, sure. Go for sure. it. Uh, no, I'll just say I, I love, again, sort of this transition from Tetris into Minecraft, where it's still sort of pixel-based gameplay, but one is very much in the box, concrete operational, and one is very much thinking outside the box, formal operational. Yeah, and you have to have another level up to really yep. do everything in the game. So now that we're in the orange bucket, a lot of these games, you know, you mentioned yeah. math, Brian. A lot of these yeah. games are really, really emphasized math. Uh, mm -hmm. This next game I'm going to show to me is one of the most orange games ever made. And it's a game that I have put, it's, it's one of my top three games in terms of like the number of hours I put into this game. It's called Factorio. And again, this game is glorious. You, you, the whole premise of the game is as orange as it gets. You are creating a factory to create yeah various things you have to create things in order to create more complex things 
in order to create more complex things, your eventual goal is to get off the planet. You're trying to build a, a starship to get yourself off of the planet. However, the entire game is composed of conveyor belts, right? You can actually watch the extract sources from one place. It goes up the conveyor belt. It goes into a furnace. The, the iron gets converted into steel, and then that goes through another conveyor belt, and other machines combine that with copper to make microchips, and then you got to take those to make your science pack. So you're making these, like, big spaghetti kind of conveyor belt factories, and it's all logic-based. Like, you can look at a video like this, and it looks overwhelming, and you can't make sense of it. But if you're playing this game, every one of those conveyor belts makes perfect sense because it's taking a resource from point A, delivering it to point B so that it can be turned into a different resource, which then gets brought to point C. And, you know, another reason why it's as orange as it gets is you land on this planet, which is already inhabited by this, like, intelligent insect race, and you're creating pollution with your factories, which is pissing off the native population. So they come in to destroy your, your factory. So you have to, <laughs> you have to nice. fight them back and destroy yeah. the native population so you can extract all the resources and Pretty get off orange. the planet. It's, it's as orange as it gets, man. Yeah. That and was, I love it. It was super orange. I great. love these kind of systems. Yeah, yeah. There's so many games like this. Yeah, I'm, now I'm thinking about it. Yep. And then that this is going to take us to another uh, math-based simulator, which is another one that I have spent countless hours on, and that is Kerbal Space Program. Uh, again, another game like the last. Orange mm. content, orange theme, orange gameplay, mm. orange across the board. So this is not so much a game as it is a simulator, though it's kind of gamified. And the point is to build a rocket using real rocket parts and some, you know, maybe exaggerated rocket parts. But you have to build a rocket that has enough thrust, is aerodynamic and et cetera, that can escape the Earth's velocity and then can orbit the world. This is the game where you literally learn orbital mechanics in order to play. I mean, it yeah. the game turns you into a mathematician. Yeah, yep. and you're you're figuring out, you know, apogees and. Parents. Yeah, I mean, this is like, uh, you know, on like flight simulators and stuff, you know, like where I could never get into them. They were just they hurt my head too much, like to to do all of the coordination on them. But, you know, one game that I've seen recently that I've I've seen some videos. I don't know why through YouTube recommendations that kind of cracked me up is. Uh, it's one that people play on now, where they it's like running airports and stuff, like yeah. running them. Like yep. I forget what it's called. Micro is it Microsoft something or other or? Uh, the one that I play is a fairly recent one. I think it might have been called just Airport Tycoon. But Tycoon games are all other, you know, orange. Yeah, but this is like one where like you have collaborative like uh, world environments or, or people where you, you interact with strangers and stuff, and like you're controlling a tower, and like people are flying their planes in and landing, and you have and you like some of the people the way they play them is what's entertaining to me. Like you have somebody who's like really doing like inhabiting the whole aircraft controller uh roger that 249er can you uh, hit the taxi the runway whatever they're saying you know it's just hilarious but that's all it is just people inhabiting these worlds of flying planes landing planes and cracks right me up. it actually reminds me of another uh game that would be perfectly actually amber to orange which is uh there's a star trek game bridge mm -hmm. commander where mm -hmm. that you play in virtual reality and everyone has a role and you're on a mission and you know one person's the engineer the other person's on weapon station, the other's the uh, captain, yeah. and they all have to coordinate, right, in order to yeah, 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 yeah. in real time in virtual reality. That's another great amber to orange role based um, yeah. strategy game. Yeah, totally. So Kerbal, uh, highly recommend this to anyone out there who uh, just likes math, who likes building things, who wants to see, you know, what is the weirdest thing that I can actually push up into orbit. People come up with all sorts of just bizarre contraptions um and they actually you know make them fly which is which is fun um this is this is a sandbox that you can easily spend 100 hours in and just be like where, where did my time go <laughs> oh man um yep. next orange game another one that's just orange across the board all three categories the sims perfect representation of orange i mean you've got a character you are deciding what they look like, their appearances, their haircuts, their clothing. When you go to design the house, you're finding your furniture to put in there. You're having, you know, very modern relationships with other yeah, Sims yeah. out there. I mean, this is just a, a, a purely orange, kind of flat, but that's yep. okay. Most yep. orange games are. Yep. Um, but, you know, another wonderful representation of an orange video game. Totally. Classic. Yep. My wife has spent um, a lot of hours playing sims 
She's playing yeah. another game these days that's further down the list. Uh, oh, okay. But The yeah. Sims was, uh, when I first met her, it was all about, I think it was Sims 2 way back then. Yeah, I remember playing it a bit back in the day. It's Putting your putting your Sims into swimming pools and then taking the ladders away? Yeah, yeah. It's just like, I think that's what's entertaining to me is like some of that silly stuff. <laughs> you, you can play any game as a red if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> totally. So speaking of great big time dumps, yeah. this next game is notorious for that. This is uh, the Civilization series. And I chose Civilization 5 instead of 6 because this is the best Civilization. 6 is good, but 5 just like, especially with all the mods that they are, all the uh, the uh, DLCs that they put on, it's it's exquisite. Um, and this is, you know, his Civilization is a very, one of the most famous game properties out there. Mm -hmm. um, it takes you again from Neolithic to Space Age eras. It's a game that, you know, it's funny, if you're an integralist playing this game, you can easily enact it as teal, right? Because you have, you're, you're bringing your understanding of sort of integral development to the game. Yeah. You know um, what, well, I, just, very orange. I know um, we're going we're gonna to talk probably later about like what, what we think will be like, you know, uh, higher level games and what would it be composed of. I like a lot of these as foundations that come in orange, but the mechanics that are involved often have limitations because they were created from the orange mine. So the game is imbued with and limited via orange. So even with the with the higher developed mine, there's just you can't enact it. You know, like there's not enough nuances. And I'm like, this is where like the next level game can emerge with maybe enough computing power and things like that. Like I want to see this game two notches up, you know. Yes. And then I'd be like, whoa, that blow my mind. Yep, hundred percent, and we'll we'll talk about some of our yep. fantasy games later because I'm hundred percent on the same page with you. Yeah, you know, this is sort of like you can take the surfaces and sort of you know enfold it in your own way. So if sure, you know, like when I'm you know when we're in sort of agrarian technology stages of the game, I'll I'll inhabit the game as if my people are at that stage, and they make yep. decisions based on that, and yeah. changes when they hit the, the industrial revolution. But you got to bring that yourself to the game. There's nothing in the game that's you know, gonna gonna bring that to you. Um, right. But this is this game is famous for you're up at three thirty in the morning. <laughs> you, you've got a deadline in the morning, and you're just like one more turn, click. Oh, <laughs> yeah, one more turn, click. Yeah, totally. Yep. Um, so now I want to go to a different flavor of orange. Um, so the orange games we've talked about until now have been very math based. Have been very, um, you know, this is very kind of conquest based. Um, this next game, I think, actually speaks more to the spirit of Orange than anything else. Sort of the, the ambition and the discovery and mm. sort of the embrace of the unknown and the curiosity um, and the beauty, really, of Orange. And this is a game I've been spending, I've spent a lot of times, a lot of time with over the last several years. But for some reason, in the last couple of weeks, um, I put a lot of time into this game because it's just... It feels like self-care in a certain kind of way. <laughs> um, it's just so endlessly relaxing. Yeah, nice. That is a game called No Man's Sky. Mm. Uh, absolutely gorgeous. So this game is, again, orange across the board. Orange content, orange to green theme. There's a couple of little postmodern elements, but it's mostly orange science fiction uh, with orange gameplay. It's a, it's a crafting-based game. It's actually a lot of crimson stuff in there, too, because it's survival-based. I mean, you start off with no resources, and you got to put together things that you need to survive, but then you got to find your starship and you got to go up and trade resources. What's interesting about this game is that it's it's procedurally generated. So there are literally in this game millions and millions, if not like a billion different planets, each of which is unique and generated procedurally so that they all have different creatures living on them, mm. uh, different aesthetics, different plant life, different geological form formation. Mm, that's cool. I played this game in virtual reality and is one of the most satisfying wow. VR experiences. Like this part here, when you're going from the surface of the world into space, I mean, you feel, <laughs> you feel that. I mean, it feels like you're going somewhere. It's cool. Um, and you know, you get to like board enormous spacecraft and space stations. And the whole game is just based on the feeling of discovery and the feeling of, of exploring something new. And it really lights up that orange uh, in a, in a mm. just very powerful and tremendously aesthetically pleasing cool. way. Nice. Yeah. So I, I, I love it. You know, what's funny about this game, too, is uh, this was one of the most overhyped games when it was released. Yeah. It's kind of like a game that recently came out, Cyberpunk, where it was so overhyped and it was released with like serious issues 
that totally damaged its reputation. Like, like uh, Cyberpunk is a joke now. Yeah, this game, totally. they kept working on it and iterating it and improving it for like five years. They're still doing it. They're still working on it right now. And it has just, it, it became even more than the game they originally promised. Um, which awesome. is, it shows even more of that orange, sweaty dedication to get something right and to achieve something with excellence. Uh, mm. these, these guys did it. These cool. Guys, uh, so now we're going to go into the time capsule, brother. Nice. Again, another game that I'm sure all of us have played in some form. Sim City. Yep. Orange Gosh, I, look at that old version. Yeah, I, I intentionally chose. I think this is the DOS version. I was looking oh for the Commodore gosh. 64 version, but I couldn't find it, so I went with DOS. Wow. Um, but yeah, I mean, let's just look at these graphics. When was the last time you saw this? Um, wow. I got so happy when I. Yeah, the know, last game I was like played. The last version I played was a lot newer than that one. I don't know how many years ago, but that's awesome. Yep, it's classic. Absolutely classic. And what's funny is that there have been many iterations of this game over the years, and but they all kept the basic formula. Right, which is the basic formula of city planning itself. You have your yep. residential zones, your commercial zones, your industrial yep. zones, um, and yep. then other you know, airports and other, you know. And then all of these games have been building on that formula until today we have today's version of this, which is another game I spend a lot of time in, City Skylines. So this is the modern version of SimCity. Uh, it's a city generator. Really, if you take a closer look, it's more of a traffic generator. Traffic is one of the most difficult things to manage in this game. And it's exhilarating. I actually uh, have built a version of Boulder in this game, which only wow. got so big before my CPU started conking out and I couldn't oh, wow. it anymore. Yeah. Right now, uh, I just got Shadow PC, which is giving yeah. me uh, you know, sort of a cloud-based computing service that gives me more power than my MacBook has. So now I'm rebuilding Longmont. Uh, That's in, awesome. Like perfect scale Longmont. Like this is how long the roads wow. are. All wow. the roads exactly where they need to be. Basing it off, tracing a map. I'm superimposing. Wow, map. that's nerdery. Right it there. is a legit version of Longmont. It's. I feel like it's like when our grandparents would play with model trains. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. So that's City Skylines. Love it. 